Hi, my name is Alejandro, and I am an ethics officer at the Executive Agency of the European Research Council. Welcome to this video about the ethical aspects of an ERC proposal. This is an important part in the application, where every applicant is invited to reflect on the ethical dimension of their research. Together, we will go through the three sections of this video. First, the importance of ethics in research. Second, detailed steps for preparing an ethically sound application. And finally, what to expect during the ethics evaluation process. So let's get started. Caring about ethics means respecting essential principles of our society. And these principles shape the way in which you can design a scientific project. Considering them from the outset of the research process, what we call ethics by design, will result in a much stronger, respectful, and fair research endeavor. Pursuing the greatest scientific ideas sometimes implies experimenting on the edge of ethical boundaries. For instance, when you recruit vulnerable individuals such as refugees, patients, or children, in some cases collecting their tissue samples may be the only way to obtain the answers that you are looking for. But as you know, there are ethical and legal limits to what a researcher can do. And that is why you need to include how you are planning to tackle the ethical aspects of your ERC proposal. However, it is important to note that some areas of research, such as mathematics or theoretical physics, may raise few, if any, ethical issues. If you are working in such areas, then the ethics section of your proposal can be quite short. Nowadays, the public's trust is essential for the advancement of the scientific enterprise. Society demands greater transparency and accountability, especially from publicly funded institutions like the ERC. Engaging in ethically sound research not only protects the participants and the researchers themselves, but also strengthens the public's confidence in science. Now, let's prepare together a proposal with a strong ethical foundation. I will guide you through five key steps that will help you build an application with a solid commitment to ethical research practices. These steps will help you in writing the ethics section of your application, as well as preparing a strong scientific proposal. Your study may require, for instance, collection of sensitive personal data from vulnerable groups. Likewise, you might need to conduct fieldwork in conflict areas or animal testing due to the lack of alternatives. There are many ways in which your investigation can entail ethical challenges and it is vital to identify them at the outset. Again, for some areas of research, this list of potential issues may be extremely short or not applicable at all. Let's talk about animal testing for a moment. It is a contentious area, especially when it involves species that are protected or when the plant experimentation procedures are severe. So, if your project involves such elements, you need to outline the ethical considerations and protocols clearly in your proposal. By doing so, you indicate awareness and a proactive stance towards ethical issues, rather than ignoring or minimizing them. The second step involves justifying the necessity of your research, given the ethical issues. Explain why your research is essential and its potential benefits for society. A well-founded argument ensures that we understand the importance of your work, despite its ethical challenges, and we see that you take measures to address them. For instance, if your research involves vulnerable populations, explain why their involvement is crucial and how you plan to protect their rights. It is also important that you familiarize yourself with the applicable laws governing your research. Understanding European legislation and how it applies in your country is imperative. But don't worry, you will find links to the specific rules in our website, and you don't need to become a legal expert. Let's take, for instance, the General Data Protection Regulation. You should really see it as a tool helping you to better design your experiments. 
It defines a safe space for your research, but it also includes justification scenarios, oversight measures, and risk mitigation strategies. As we will see in a minute, these are key steps in this process. If your host institution is not based in a European member state, please note that the relevant European law still applies to all research funded by the European Framework Research Programme. So it applies to you too. State the relevant rules in your application to show that your research is not only ethically sound, but also legally compliant. The next thing you need to consider is risk mitigation strategies. I am referring here to risk from an ethical point of view. You will, of course, need to think about risk mitigation in the scientific part of your proposal too. But in this phase, you should lay out a clear plan on managing and reducing ethical risks. For example, create consent process tailored to your participants' needs. If your research involves sensitive data, consider employing advanced data anonymization or encryption techniques to protect participants' identities. Finally, consider suitable ethical oversight. If your research includes potential ethical challenges, it is important to establish a framework for ethical review. This is typically done by ethics committees in universities and research organizations. Depending on the ethical issue and member state, these committees can also be established at local or national levels. Identify which ethics committees or boards will oversee your project. While it is not obligatory to do so before you get funded, we highly recommend approaching them during the preparatory phase of your application. Describe how these reviews will be conducted, addressed, and follow up throughout the entire project. This demonstrates a long-term commitment to maintaining ethical standards. After considering these points, it is time to see how they can help you in practical terms. Let's complete together the ethics section of your proposal, which is in part A of the application form. It includes an ethics issue table and an ethics self-assessment area. Use the issue table to identify all relevant ethics issues and the self-assessment to provide detailed explanations. If the provided space is insufficient, consider preparing an ethics annex as additional documentation. It's not mandatory, but you can briefly include in part B2 aspects of ethics closely related to the scientific methodology. Still, your part B must really focus on the science itself. To help you complete the ethics section, you can find on our website a starting guide called How to Prepare Your Ethics Self-Assessment. This is a very useful document to begin with. It contains useful tips and examples for each scientific domain. Additionally, you will also find on our website several guides addressing specific issues in depth, including links to the legal framework regulating different scientific activities. Now, let's explore the ethics review process at the ERC. This only applies to proposals which are selected for funding through the scientific evaluation process. No matter the subject of your proposal, if it is selected for funding, it needs to go through an ethics appraisal procedure. The initial assessment is an internal review by us, the team of ethics officers at the ERC. Our main task is to identify projects with potentially complex or serious ethical issues. For most applications, if you have adequately addressed this, your research will receive ethics clearance without any additional assessment or need for inputs. However, proposals that present more complex ethical challenges may require further evaluation by an independent ethics panel. This panel is composed of external experts, mostly researchers themselves, just like you, but specifically trained to assess ethical risks and guide applicants. They will help you find suitable strategies for any potential issue that needs to be mitigated. For proposals needing further input, the experts can still provide ethical clearance with additional recommendations. In other cases, they may also require further information from the applicant before clearance can be given. As part of our continued support, 
the experts might suggest an independent ethics advisor who can offer guidance to your research team. This advisor can play a critical role, providing support and ensuring compliance with ethical practices throughout the project. Additionally, the experts can recommend a periodic ethics review, especially for projects with sensitive activities. Thanks to these reviews, we can have a structured re-evaluation to assure the ethical soundness of the research activities. To summarize, it should be clear by now that embedding ethics into your ERC proposal is not just a legal requirement, but a significant component of impactful scientific research. Thank you for joining us in this video. For additional resources and support, visit the ERC website or reach out to us directly with any questions you may have. Thank you.